husband. I don't know if I can. <laughs> Praise the Lord, our pastor. Happy Mother's Day. Every mother, stand on your feet. Oh, Lord, you look so pretty, all of you. You are so pretty inside and out. All of you, thank you for being here this morning. I hope that you are enjoying the service. And the Lord has a word for us because he cares for us. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. First of all, I'd like to uh, welcome uh, Miss, Mrs. Carrie Ann Wright. Yes. Let's give her a hand. Carrie Ann Wright, sister Sonia's daughter. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you for being here with us this morning. Yes. Praise the Lord. It's good to see you all in the house visiting or some of you that are back after a few weeks sister patsy yes. thank you for being here sister yes. krista yes. praise the lord anyone in the house for the first time this morning besides uh carrie ann no well god is good sorry i have so many gifts and bags that i don't know exactly which one is which i'm trying to get settled here uh, to begin this word that the Lord has placed in my heart. And as we begin, let's open up our Bibles in the book of Exodus. Praise the Lord, for He is good. Hallelujah, His mercy endures forever. What a privilege it is, look. I'm a praise dancer. That's what I've been my whole ministry life. But uh, I was asked to bring the world this. I will, I will be dancing with those girls right there. That's what I will be doing if it was my choice. But you know, the Lord is in the business of stretching us, right? Yeah. And He's in the business of taking us out of our comfort zone. And well, this is really taking me out of my comfort zone, to be honest with you. But through the Holy Spirit, I know that we will be able to do this together. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for those beautiful songs. Thank you the, the Children's Church, Sister Sandra. That was wonderful, everything they done. My praise dancers, praise the Lord. Woo! They did a wonderful job and also Jalia wasn't able to be here, but she was part of it. But there was some school uh, commitments that she had and not much time between Easter and uh, Mother's Day. So she wasn't able to do it. So, but um, thank you for everything and the flowers and the gifts and the poems and everything is wonderful. I feel honored as a mother and that's what we are going to uh, right now in the book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12 we're going to start with what the Lord have instructed his people to do amen let's pray father we thank you for your word we thank you Lord for this wonderful day of celebration we thank you for every mother in this house every spiritual mother lord we thank you for the gift that you have given us lord of motherhood lord we thank you father god for giving us the privilege to have children oh god what a gift oh what a wonderful gift lord god that we can bear life hallelujah with your help father i pray that you bless the ears of the listeners, Lord God, and that you will help me through your Holy Spirit and the anointing, Father God, to bring this word, Father, to honor their mothers today, but to realize and to just be reminded, Lord, that it's with your help that we can do this, Lord God, and everything we do is with you, with us, Lord God, and we thank you, Father, we ask you, Lord, to just bless this word and this um, message, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we just give you all the honor and all the glory is for you. Amen. Amen. 
Are we there yet? Amen. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12. When you have it, say amen. Amen. I don't know what kind of Bible you have, what kind of version do you have, but this verse is the same in every Bible. Simply honor your father and mother. Today, we are honoring the mothers. Do we honor them only today on Mother's Day? Every day, right? Every day. Every day they deserve to be honored all year round. But if you see, right at the heart of the Ten Commandments, the Lord is emphasizing to honor our father and mother. Remember, today we are honoring our mothers, so we're going to focus just on the mothers. Amen? And then, look how important it is for God, this parenting thing. Look how... how um, Special parents are for God. That out of these ten commandments, this one particularly has a promise. It says, if you do these, then let's continue. What does it say? Then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. So on top of the blessings that the Lord bestows on us already for obeying Him, this one has a bonus. Yes. Huh? Yes. Who doesn't want to live a long and full life? <laughs> Do you? I want to live a long and full life. So then we must honor our mother, our parents. Amen? So I just wanted to give the start of this message based on why we honoring mothers today and is even biblical. Amen? The Lord has inst instructed us to do that. Hallelujah. Well, first I would like to honor my beautiful, wonderful mom. How to be a mother from her. She taught me everything, and I learned how to cook from her. I learned she, she, she's, she's always been such a tireless worker, just tireless, hard worker, and I learned that from her. You know, she never grow tired or weary, and she does everything he has to. She has to do. And she cared for me, she loved me, she set up the examples for me, and I learned. She's my role model. Yeah. She's my role model, and, and also, you know what? I learned from her how to be feminine. Come on. It's important. It's important. I say I love you, mom. So, how wonderful. It's just unbelievable. We think that we do a lot. She just she used to do so much, even bread from scratch. You know, work with my dad in the shop, go inside the house, cook breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I mean, sew our own dresses. My mom sew my sister and my own dresses. I mean, she was just working, 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 hard worker all the time, and she still is. At uh, 70 years old. What an example. I am so bad. And I did. I, I love that I learned to be feminine. You know? yeah. It's important. We are females. The Lord created us to be, you know. And we have to be feminine. Yes. We have to on. He made us, you know. Yeah. It doesn't matter, but, you know. Uh, you just, you know, you can put a little bit of makeup and you can just fix your hair a little bit, you know. You know. Your mothers can show you secrets, how to put lotions and just yeah. keep your hair. Come on, we gotta be feminine. See, the Lord made us female, and we have to, you know, honor that and be feminine. It's good. You're not gonna go to hell for a little bit of makeup. Come on. Come on, anybody with me? Say amen. 
you, you don't that, you don't have to be gorgeous. You can make yourself feel gorgeous. Right, Sister Emily? We were talking about that the other day. And it makes you feel better. Like Sister Sandra said, hey, men are visual. No matter how many degrees you have, no matter how wise, how wonderful, how great you cook, men are visual. So they're going to look at you for the way you look. Amen? So, yeah. Thank you, Mommy, for teaching how to be, you know, feminine. And, you know, your nails and, you know. It's, it's good. What a gift to be a woman. Come on. Thank you, Lord. What a gift to be a woman. Hallelujah. Let me see if I have room here for the Bible and my notes at the same time. Thank you, Lord. All right. So, uh, also, I'd like to honor my mother-in-law. She's not here today, but she's in our hearts. Amen. They are ministering somewhere else, so they couldn't make it. But I thank my mother-in-law, Susan, for raising our pastor. Yeah. Yeah, come on. For doing a wonderful job preparing this man to serve the Lord, yes. to be a leader, amen, amen. amen. in our church of God prophecy in the kingdom of God. I thank her that she prepared him for me. Glory! Yes. Woo. Sorry for my shouts of, uh, of praise. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Susan. We love you. Happy Mother's Day. If you're watching now or if you will watch later, we love you and we honor you this morning. Yes. Mm -hmm. So today we are celebrating all mothers. Yes. Young mothers, old mothers, yes. uh, mothers to be, amen? Yes. And spiritual mothers, yes. huh? Yes. And single mothers. Yes. And, and, and on that note, single mothers, yes. I so honor single mothers because they have to be what? Father and mother, yeah. so they deserve a double portion of honor. Amen? Amen. Yep. Amen. Yes, it's not easy to be a mother. Nevertheless, be mother and father. Woo. So honor. If you see a, a single mother, if you have a single mother in your family, just honor them with a double portion of honor. Yeah. Hallelujah. I've been there. I've been there. Oh, and let me tell you. Woo. Maybe that's why I just, you know, I'm always, because you gotta do both, you gotta put the trash out, you gotta wash the car, you gotta do what the mother does, and the mo a woman does, plus everything else. Oh, praise the Lord, I've been there. Thank you, Lord, for your help. Thank you, Lord, for answering my prayers. Hallelujah. So we are celebrating all the mothers. But what are we emphasizing today? What am I emphasizing this morning? Hmm? In this sermon that I hope I'm not going to take too long because I don't want to keep you long over here. Uh, we are emphasizing this gift all of motherhood, this maternal gift, whether you have children of your own or you don't. You are, you know, a spiritual mother. Motherhood is not only conceiving and, and bearing a child, you know, it doesn't consist only on that. A mother goes beyond conceiving and bearing a child. A mother or a, or a motherly caring woman will nurture those in her care. Amen? And how is she going to nurture them? Unconditionally. Amen? Uh, fearlessly. With perseverance. Amen? Valiantly. I like that word. Timelessly. Selflessly, with love, discipline, wisdom, support, counseling, compassion, strength, shaping and modeling life. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Influencing their character for their entire lifetime. Yes. You know, my mother influenced me. Not only when I was a little girl, but for the rest, her influence for the rest of my life. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Yes. That's why we never, it's, it's hard to break that bond, right? Yes. I know some of you lost your mothers and they're not here and you're, and you are moved today. You are, you know, it's very emotive uh, not to have them, but you know, what they did for you and that will never perish. Yes. What they've done for you and your, your memory of them will never perish. And the legacy that they left in your life 
will never perish. Amen? Amen. And you, it's your turn to pass it on to your children. I miss my glasses. I ran over them and I'm trying to cope with these ones. Uh, but it's not the same. Uh, so bear with me. And um, so we are emphasizing this gift. It doesn't matter if you had your own child of your own, but you are pouring into someone, yeah. nurturing them, molding them. Amen? Yes. Your impact, your influence is so important in this world. And to the young ladies, I want to tell them something, because I don't know about you, but I hear, I'm hearing a lot in these gen younger generations, I'm hearing a lot of these. Oh, I don't want to have children. Uh -huh. I don't want to have children. I'm not going to have children. Mm -hmm. they, that's what they tell you. Like, that's an old fashioned thing, you know. That's what they tell you. I don't want to have children. I'm telling you, to those young mothers, having children gives you maturity. Yeah. Having children gives you growth. Amen? It, 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 really, it really shapes you and, and, and it really gives you purpose and drive. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Having children, hallelujah, brings you closer to God because you realize by the, from the moment you conceive, amen, you realize that without Him, it's not going to work. That you're not gonna, and when you bring Him home, uh, you, you're like, what do I do now? You know, at first, especially if it is your first one. Wow. So, don't be afraid, you know, to, to have children because you know what? It, it also glorifies God. It fulfills his plan of multiply, right? And be fruitful and multiply, he said, didn't he? So we honor God and we glorify him when we have children and children are a blessing from God. He blesses us with them. Hallelujah, glory to his name. So there's no such thing as a motherhood subject, let's say, in school, where you go and you learn how to be a mother. No, a mother learns from her own mother, or grandmother, right. or her sister, or, or, or her aunt, or, or her cousin, or great-grandmother. Mm -hmm. She learns from her neighbor, or from the sisters here at church, amen? So that's how we learn from their example. That's why your example is so important, amen? So they can learn from you. You know that how children I sometimes you talk, talk, talk. It's good to talk to him, to them. It's important to talk to them. But you know, some children are, the more you talk, the more they let her block you. I don't know if you if you ever been there. It's like you talk, you, you know, you, especially boys, you know, it's just they're not into all that talking, you know. So but your example it speaks louder than your words sometimes. Amen? Amen. But talking is important and it's part of our how we discipline them. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. Yes. So, uh, yeah, we learn, we learn from one another. That's how iron sharpens iron, right? We learn from other mothers. Hallelujah. And the mother has an instinct also, like an inner instinct, how to take care of, of her family. It's within her, amen? And, and, and she discovers this the minute she steps in faith into this role. Because it's like a step in faith, yes. amen, to be a mother. Amen. Without preparation, without a school, just the school of your family or your neighbors or your church sisters. Hallelujah. It's a step in faith. Yes. And the Lord helps us, hallelujah, with a step of faith. From the moment you 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 are birthing that boy, today's sister um, Drew, when she was singing, she was like, push, 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 right? And she reminded me at that moment the Lord spoke to me. You know, and it's like when you are delivering a baby, you are pushing, you are pushing life out of your body. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not easy. No. <laughs> It's a miracle. The whole conception thing, the whole the, the baby, the way it forms, and and, and, the, and the way you know you deliver that baby is a miracle. Hallelujah! Pushing life out of your body. Glory to His name. 
And right there, I believe that's when the miracle produces. Right there, there's a miracle that produces, you know, from, from this heavenly power comes on you for you to be able, hallelujah, to do something, you know, that you wouldn't be able to do it. What a miracle, what a miracle it is. Oh, to procreate and to be fruitful and multiply the way he said. Thank you, Lord, for giving us that privilege. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We honor you for that. For you have given us the honor, Lord. As women, you have given us the honor to bear life like that. Thank you, Lord. And you know, as she steps into this step of faith of being a mother, she begins to learn to dance the maternal rhythm of multitasking. Huh? Wisely, she makes priorities among all the things she does. Wake up before anyone else, pray, make coffee and breakfast, wash dishes, prepare the kids to go to school, arrange the slow cooker in the morning to have dinner ready when you get back from work, make the bed, walk the dog, work 40 hours, get the grocery and put them away, organize, clean the house, and that's a whole list on its own that we don't have time to cover. make appointments, solve multiple problems, find ways to save money, get the sales, recycle, try to fix things, others won't, turn the lights off, everyone lives on, give everyone in the house reminders about everything, replace water in the refrigerator that everyone drinks, mediate arguments, calls, text, church and family members, pray again, do serving in different capacities, never say no to anything, read, study, inform yourselves, prepare events, prepare gifts, birthday gifts, teacher's gifts, all kinds of gifts, what are the plans, run all the kinds of errands, negotiate, invest, plan family entertainment, and vacations, have meetings with teachers, take them to school, uh, sports uh, and other activities. Be a taxi. Make sure they hang out with the right friends. Read with them. Encourage them. Have time to talk to them. Talk them in at bedtime. Pray again and make sure that you save enough energy to be with your husband before the day, the day ends. A condensed list. Amen? Amen. But we could go on and on and on and on. Amen? This is just a condensed list of all the things she does. Praise the Lord for her. Thank you, Lord, for being there for us. And you know, the most important thing is not how much she does, but how she does it. Right. Amen? Amen. With love. Amen. Yes. Amen. Without expecting anything on return. Yes. Right? That's right? Yes. Caring. Yes. Yes. Glory. Thank you, Lord, for that ability. Yes. So we're gonna go, we're gonna see in, in Proverbs 31 just a few virtues, not all of them, because we don't have all the time to to speak about all the virtues that women, the mothers have. Amen. So we're just gonna see. Uh, a few of them. The, before we go to Proverbs 31, you can open your Bibles there. But in the meantime, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, read to you. You don't have to look for it because because in through all this toilsome life and, and, and busyness that she has, she also has to make sure that she does all this with joy. Amen. Amen. And, and 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 Proverbs. In Proverbs, um, let this, let's see, Proverbs 23, verse 25b says, May she who gave you birth be joyful. So we have to stay and don't let anything steal our joy. We have to stay joyful through all this toilsome life. 
Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. And our joy comes from? The Lord. From the Lord. Amen? He is our strength. Yes. And we can do all things through? Christ. Christ. Who is our strength? He strengthens us. Amen. Hallelujah. We're not going to read all these um, virtues, but I have highlighted a few. And I want you to follow me, and we're going to skip through. And started, starting on the verse 15, it says, She gets up before dawn to prepare breakfast for her household and plan the day's work for her servant girls. She, she goes to inspect a field and buys it. With her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She's energetic and strong, a hard worker. She makes sure her dealings are profitable and her land burns late into the night. Meaning, she stays, she stays, I, she stays up late. Amen? Her hands are busy, spinning thread, her fingers twisting fiber. She extends a helping hand to the poor and opens her arms to the needy. She has no fear of winter for her household, for everyone has warm clothes. And verse um, 25, she is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. When she speaks, her words are wise, and she gives instruction with kindness. She carefully watches everything in her household and suffers nothing from laziness. Her children stand and bless her. Her husband praises her. There are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, ladies, and beauty does not last. Listen up. But a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. Reward her for what she has done. Let her deeds publicly declare her praise. Amen? Hallelujah. So, 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 so what's so what's the key for everything that she does? Well, what's the key? How can she balance all these uh, activities for her family? How can she balance everything, uh, these priorities that she learned how to, you know, wisely choose? Well, what do I do first? Because sometimes there's so much to do, you know, especially when you have many. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Twins and the baby, welcome back. Well, well, how can she get this balance? By fearing the Lord. Amen? Yes. By, counting, by counting on Him. Yes. By making Him your first, number one relationship in your life. Hallelujah. He is the source of your strength, yes. your wisdom. Amen? Amen? When you are weak, He's what? He's strong in your weaknesses. He is strong. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God Almighty. And you know what? Eventually, she will retire from doing all of that. You know? She will retire from even her secular job. You know, working 40 hours and whatever amount of hours you work. But will she ever retire from motherhood? No. No. She will never retire from motherhood. Thank you, Lord. Praise his holy name. Mothers are servant a heart. Do you know that mothers have that? That gift of serving. You know, knowing how to put, put, put the, the needs of the other ones before your own needs. Amen? That's, that's something. It's a gift that the Lord gave us because he made us the ether, the Hebrew word for helper. Remember? He gave us that gift. It's an attribute of God himself. Because he is our helper. And he made us the helper. Amen? Just like he is. Praise the Lord. A special gift. The answer. The helper. Putting the needs of others. Lay your life before the other ones. Amen? Advices for mothers from the Bible. Listen up. Motherhood is a responsibility and calling from the Lord. It's a way, another way to glorify the Lord. It's another way to serve the Lord. Amen? So it's a calling that you have from Him. That's why we do it the best we can to honor Him. Hallelujah. If in 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 10, it says, 
she must be well respected by everyone because of the good she has done. Has she brought up her children well? There's a question right there. Um, the Apostle Paul wrote and other questions, right? But yes, it is vital for moms to be warm women of faith who teach children to love the Lord and to point them towards Christ. Amen. Come on, mothers. Praying for them, modeling faith and godly character in your children. Hallelujah. You want to have successful children? Praise the Lord, like Sister Sandra cited, they shall never depart. Amen. And amen. When you when you teach him on the ways of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Uh, and children, listen to Pro Proverbs 1a, verse B, I mean part B, the second part of verse A. It says, Don't neglect your mother's instruction. Children, listen up. Don't neglect your mother's instructions. Proverbs 9, 29, 15. To discipline a child produces wisdom, but a mother is disgraced by an undisciplined child. So ladies, mothers, this is our, our priority, to discipline our children. I know how busy you are. I know how much you work. I know all the things that you have to do. But, you know, we gotta stay focused yes. on our main priorities, yes. you know, yes. our ministry to our children. Yes. Praise the Lord. We don't neglect them, so they won't neglect our instructions like we just read. Yes. Praise the Lord. And remember, Proverbs 14.1, a wise woman buildeth her home. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Mothers, Women, we build our home, the Lord says it. Yeah. But what happened? A foolish woman tears it down with her own hands. Amen? That's why we have to be diligent. That's why we have to talk to Him, consult Him. Oh, Holy Spirit, He is my counselor. Above all counselors, He is my counselor. When I lack wisdom, I ask Him. You know, he promises that if we lack wisdom, he'll give it to us. We just got to ask. You know, Lord, I have a, I have a baby. I don't know how to deal with, with this baby. Well, he'll give you knowledge and wisdom. And, and, and Lord, I have a toddler now. I don't know how, I how to deal with this toddler. Well, he did, he'll give you wisdom for that stage. Well, Lord, I have a teenager now. And I don't, you know, you know it's, you're not a mother the same way. As they grow, you have to grow with them. I have a teenager now. Yes. This is not the same as when he was eight years old. Yes. This is another level of motherhood. Yes. And then when, and then one day, you know, they'll be adults and then and all that kind of stuff, and they'll they'll bring their children. And, well, you know all that better than me, but I'll get there. You'll pray for me. Woo! So yes, you need constant. You know, we need to update the wisdom as they grow. We gotta update it, yes. and we gotta consult our Lord. He will be there for you. If you are lacking wisdom, He will be there for you. He will show you how to do it. He'll speak to you and you'll know what to do in those hard moments when you don't know what decision to make for your children. Praise the Lord. You know what your children need. You know inside of you what they need. Hallelujah. Because He speaks to you. He reveals to you sometimes things. Right? He does reveal things. Oh, the truth shall set you free. You know, He exposes things when you are concerned. Hallelujah. He'll show you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's build our homes, mothers. Yes. Let's build our Christian yes. homes. Yes. Let's build up, you know, yes. our children for, 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 our, for our community. Yes. Amen? For God's kingdom to impact this world. That's our job. Wow. What a privilege we have. Praise the Lord. Now let's take a look at some of these extraordinary mothers in the Bible. Amen? Do I have some time? Pastor? 
Yes, he says, praise the Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Mothers in the Bible, <clears throat> they obey God's calling, they served yes. sacrificially, and they built a life of faith yes. for their family. We can learn so much from their examples, starting for Sarah. For instance, yes. Sarah had to wait past childbearing yes. time to what? To receive the fulfillment of God's promise of a yes. descendant. Yes. Hmm? Isaac were going to uh, continue the legacy of his dad, Abraham, yes. the father of faith. Yes. Praise the Lord. Then we have Hagar. Oh, yes. poor Hagar. She had to endure misery. Yes. But she still obeyed God. She remained obedient. And what happened? He blessed her with numerous descendants through Ishmael. Amen? Amen. Rebecca. Rebecca believed in God's plans for, his, for her sons, trusting in God's sovereignty, who gave her son Jacob a new name, Israel. He took the name of the nation. Wow. Women of God. Jochebed, who's Jochebed? She protected her son from Pharaoh's command to kill every newborn Hebrew boy. Amen? By faith, when she placed Moses in that basket and, and put it in the Nile River, she was actually placing her baby into the hands of God. How many times you had to do that? To rescue your son, to rescue your daughter from something, from with faith, hallelujah. She placed a baby in that basket, hoping that what happened, the Pharaoh's daughter found that basket, amen? And she raised that child in the palace, hallelujah. And she still found someone to nurse the baby and it was actually, his own mother. Yes. What a miracle. Yes. She entrusted that baby into God's hands. Yes. Hallelujah. When you put, uh, Sylvia, when you put your babies in the car to take them somewhere, when you put them in the, the stroller, when you put them in the uh, car seat, you know, you're actually entrusting them yes. into God's hands. Every day when you go about your, you know, work or whatever, every time I drove my son off of school, I prayed the whole way. You know, and I gave an example because we prayed together the way to school, you know, and I'm like, Lord, I know there's a lot of stuff going on in that school, yeah. you know, and sometimes it gives you a little bit of, you know, what's going to happen. And that's how I used to be when I first, you know, the first day you take your child to the daycare or the school and you're like, oh, you know, <laughs> you know, you protect them so much and I'm like, living with strangers here, yeah. you know. But you actually entrust your child into God's hands. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And you don't fear yes. because you know he is with them. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. And you know what? So God made Moses to be the leader, to lead his people out of Egypt after 400 years of slavery into the promised land. Amen. And God gave yes. Moses the law, including honor thy mother. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Naomi. Naomi lost her husband and her two only sons. Yes. yes. But still, she was an exemplary mother-in-law. Yes. She shared her faith with her um, daughters-in-law, yes. even in times of extreme betterness. I mean, yes, come on. Yes. Not only you lost your husband, but you also lost your only two sons. Yes. Betterness. She said, don't call me Naomi because I'm better than Naomi meant uh, sweet, right? Sweetness. She's like extremely better. But she still shared her faith. Yes. And Ruth, one of her daughters-in-law, yes. followed her. Yes. And she said, yes. and Ruth Verse 1, uh, I mean, chapter 1, verse 16 and 17, she said, Don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you leave, I will leave. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me severely 
if I allow, if I allow anything but death to separate us. She said, Ruth, honor her mother-in-law. Hallelujah. Pray, pray for your daughters-in-law. Continue sharing faith. Continue sharing your example. One day, it'll pay off. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord God. Thank you. With wisdom and discernment, she led Ruth to her divine destiny. And she met Boaz, her kinsman redeemer. Hallelujah. Glory. And, as, and they, they had Obed. And Obed was the father of Jesse. And Jesse was the father of David, the king. Hallelujah. Look at your legacy. Look at that legacy. And you know what? Ruth. Being a Moabite, she was a, she wasn't, you know, she was a foreigner, right? Out of the 66 books in the Bible, you know, the Bible has 66 books. Only two bear the name of women. And Ruth is one of them, the first one of them, has the name of this Ruth. So how important our example, even to our daughters-in-law. I pray for my daughter-in-law. See, ever since my son is a little boy, I've been praying for that daughter-in-law. I ask God, I say, she is there somewhere, and I pray that you will prepare him for, prepare her for him, you know. I pray, I pray, and I say, Lord, you know, fill him up with your Holy Spirit. I want, you know, I pray that she will love you above everything, and that she will learn how to love my son. Yes, after, Thank you know, Jesus. she loves yes. you. So, yes. you, your impact, you know, like Thank I said, Lord. just pray, your own Amen. example, and your and your words too. Right. They play uh, yeah. a big um, impact yeah. in the life of your descendants. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Not only your children, but their children, and their children, and their children, yeah. like we see in the times of the Bible. Hannah! Oh, Hannah, she prayed earnestly, and she kept her promise to God. She said, you know, after several years of misery, after several years of mockery and, and, and shame, you know, because she couldn't bear a child, she had had enough. And she 